Car Diamond made headlines around the world in November when they recovered a, a diamond from their Karawi mine in Botswana that was more than 1,100 carats large, the second largest diamond ever recovered. Let's talk to William Lamb, the CEO, to find out more about it. Hi, William. Hi, James. How Good are you? Good to see you. Thanks for Good. doing this. Thank you very much. So, uh, Lucetti Lorona, everybody yes. is talking about it. Tell me about how you heard about it, what you felt when you first saw it and held it in your hand. Um, it actually took two weeks before I got to hold it since, the, okay. since it was first um, discovered. But I actually got a call fairly early in the morning from our chief operating officer who was down in Gabs. Um, and I actually missed the first call. And I phoned him back at just about four o'clock in the morning and he said to me, are you sitting down? And generally when you get a call like that, you expect it to be bad news. Mm -hmm. um, and he said, so are you sitting down? So again, is it bad news? And he yeah. said, well, congratulations, Lucara is the first company in more than 100 years to recover a stone larger than 1,000 carats. Mm -hmm. And you don't quite know what to say. The, the first thing that comes to mind is um, a bit of shock and awe. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then, of course, uh, it, you start to sort of reality sets in in terms of sort of what you've actually been able to achieve. And I think it's, it's more important to understand the changes that we made to the process plant to enable that recovery. Right. Um, diamond plants generally aren't set up to recover stones the size of a tennis ball. Um, and the equipment which we put in was only commissioned in July um, and put into production. So to, to get the rewards from it, literally four months after the installation of the, the, the new machines, sort of was a bit of fulfillment of what we'd actually planned straight from the start. Right, right. Um, so what are the plans for the Lasetti Lorona? So yeah. we will sell it. Yeah. Um, we when, are, when? So we're, we're hoping to sell it sort of before the half year. Okay. Um, we are going to sell it on the live auction, um, something that sort of people generally don't do. But I think if you look at the historical significance of the stone, not just to Botswana, but to the, the, the diamond world, nothing like this has actually been seen in more than 110, 111 years. Mm -hmm. Oddly enough, I, I noticed this morning, it's 111 years to when we sell it, which runs in with the four ones it was when we, we actually right. recovered it. Right. But um, so we, we are going to go through a live auction process. We're going to follow what they call an Art Basel process. We will take it to a number of different cities, show the stone off to ultra high net worth individuals, um, have a viewing opportunity for both diamond tiers and the ultra high net worth individuals' representatives okay. to look at the stone, evaluate the stone, um, have a look to see what they potentially see in the stone, and then we'll take it to a live auction from so there. So no, uh, no road show for uh, people for a broader distribution of people who would love to see this piece of history. Um, we have had a lot of um, requests from. Um, the, the Smithsonian from the National Museum in, in London to actually put it on display. Those are requests which we, we can only manage once we've actually got somebody who's looking to, to acquire it. Um, at this point, because of the significance of the stone, we'd rather monetize it first and then go into negotiations with whoever actually buys it to see whether those opportunities for the wider public to view the stone. Right, right. Now, so you were saying earlier that it's that, that the stone was originally about almost a, almost 1,500 carats? Yes. So the, a fragment of a... The 374 carat piece which came out the following day is part of the original stone. There is, however, a fairly sort of about the size of a five cent piece. Um, section of natural diamond, it's resorbed, it's a natural diamond surface, which is between the two pieces. So there was already a, a flaw in there during the emplacement. And I think another good point here is um, the stone just fits through the current screen size which we have. If that 300 carat piece wasn't cleaved off and whether it came off in the blast, in the mole, or just as it drops onto the stockpile, right. if it hadn't have happened, the entire stone would have gone to the crush and we wouldn't have a Lissetti Lorona. Wow. Um, so a little bit of luck on our side, but mm -hmm. we've now looked at what we need to do to upgrade the process further. Right. So by most likely September of this year, we will be at 90 millimeters. So going up from the 60 to 90 millimeters. And okay. then we're, we're busy contemplating at the moment, based on this number of large stones which we've recovered, do we put in a mega diamond recovery? And that's to go up to 120 millimeters in size. But that we'll put right at the front end of the process, which gives us a lot of flexibility to manage the size distribution, which is processed, allowing us to recover the large stones up front before it sees any significant area where we could potentially damage them. Okay. Given that the value is, is based in large part on the scarcity of these diamonds that you're pulling out of Karawi, is there like sort of a catch-22 risk that the more of these that you pull out? M most, most definitely. Yeah. Um, we, we have to look at the, the rarity of what we're actually recovering. Um, where you look at... And I, th I think the 800 character just, just throws the, the, that into um, a little bit of a, a question. If you're looking at the plus 100 or plus 1,000 carat stone, it's a one in century event. The fact that the 813 was lying next to it, we don't know when we're going to see another plus 800 carat stone. But that 800 automatically says, well, is there a possibility that there are going to be more? So we are very cognizant of how many large stones we're producing and what that may potentially do to the market. Okay. Just finally, William, uh, thanks again for making the time. I know you're a busy guy. Um, 
you know, I think Lupari touched almost a billion market cap, strong cash position. Is there any uh, chance of using that as currency for acquisitions anytime soon? We're looking at everything. Yeah, and okay. I think it's, it's when you look at the, the diamond market, there are so few players. Um, to actually find something first that is comparable to the asset which we currently hold, which wouldn't be dilutive to our current shareholding, right. it's fairly difficult. Mm -hmm. But again, we, we look at everything. It is our job to understand what is actually out there. And with the currency, the cash position, we need to be able to have that work for the shareholders. Okay, great. great. Thanks again for doing it. Thank you much. Good talking to you. Thank you. So that was Lucara Diamond. Certainly a fabulous uh, diamond story. And probably the most exciting story in a Lendine group which has worldwide assets.